Call this meeting of the Conroe <coughs> Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meeting Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is now 6 o'clock. Uh, please join me with uh, Mr. Hubert leading us in the invocation and Mr. Sanders in the pledge. <coughs> Feel free to join me. Most kind of gracious Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day that we have had for the replenishing grains for our, our community. We are grateful for the opportunity we have to serve as uh, Conroe ISD School Board trustees. We're grateful for the children, for the youth, and for the teachers that are a part of their life and part of their education. We ask you to be with them and be with their parents as well as they round out the rest of this year and looking forward to their summertime. We ask you to be with those who are mourning at this time with the current events that are happening throughout the world. And we we ask you to be with us this day. We ask these things in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please join me in pledges to our country and our state. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Honor Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas. One, one state, under God, one and indivisible. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Hebert, Mr. Sanders. Um, item 2A, Special District Recognition, 2017 Division I Boys, 148-pound weight class powerlifting state champion, Dr. Stockton. All right, at this time I'll ask uh, Mr. Colshan, principal of the Woodlands High School, to come up and introduce our coach, who will introduce our recipient. Dr. Stockton, Mrs. Bush, members of the board, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight to recognize several special young men, one from the Woodlands High School and one from Conroe High School. Uh, powerlifting is not one of those sports that you get to read a lot about in the paper, but I promise you these young men work every much as hard as any of the other athletes we have. To introduce our athlete is our coach, Craig Smith. Uh, Dr. Stockton and members of the school board, uh, I want to echo what Mr. Colson said, thanking you for the support for powerlifting. Uh, while a lot of our kids do play multiple sports, um, a lot uh, end up focusing on powerlifting. They find a place where they can be part of a team and really find a place they can contribute. Uh, I am very honored to present Gavin Webster to you tonight. Um, he is not only a tremendous athlete, but he is a remarkable representative of Conroe SD. He's a great student, leader, and person. Um, over his career, he is a one about everything you can possibly do in powerlifting. Uh, he's a four-time regional medalist, a three-time state qualifier, a two-time regional champion, and now a two-time state champion, defending his title from last year. Um, this year at the state meet, uh, he had a 585-pound squat, a 350-pound bench press, and a 540-pound deadlift. All that set a new state record for total weight in his weight class with 1,475 pounds. That was one of the oldest records in the books. Uh, it was had been in place since 1990, a record that he broke. Wow. Um, and for uh, his achievements, he was also honored by being named the most outstanding lifter at the meet for Division I Live Platform. Awesome. I know that our entire program at Powerlifting is going to benefit from his leadership over the next several years. And it's my honor to present Gavin Weston. All right, item 2B, Special Board District Recognition 2017 Division I Boys 198-pound weight class powerlifting state champion, Dr. All right, Stockton. staying with the powerlifting state champion theme, uh, let's uh, have Dr. Weatherly, Principal of Conroe High School, come up and introduce our coach. Dr. Stockton, Ms. Bush, <coughs> school board members, we thank you so much for the, uh, the time that you're granting us tonight to be able to come and 
and to honor these student athletes. And when I say student athletes, I know that you are well aware that not only are we in one of the best academic districts, if not the best academic district in the state of Texas, we are also in one of the most competitive mm -hmm. uh, athletic uh, districts in the state of Texas. So anytime that we're able to come and, and uh, honor our students, it is such an honor. And we also have a state champion at Conroe High School that we're very proud of and here tonight to introduce him. And, uh, and our assistant coach is uh, Coach Sean Halloran. Good evening, uh, President Bush, fellow board members, Dr. Stockton. Thank you for having us here this evening uh, to honor this outstanding young individual. Uh, on behalf of Conroe High School and the boys and girls powerlifting team, uh, we thank you for, for having us here. Uh, Roy's an outstanding young man, both academically outstanding and athletically. It's been a pleasure for Coach Thompson and myself uh, the past three years, but mainly the past two years, to really get to enjoy this young man. He's a very focused individual, uh, had a tremendous uh, junior year, and was at state last year, but it didn't culminate where he exactly wanted it to, uh, to end, and took on his senior year um, <coughs> with vigor and aggressiveness and a really a lot of focus, and uh, attained all the goals that he was had laid out in front of him for the course of the year. And he was a great leader for both teams. Uh, <clears throat> the boys team uh, finished up as the regional champs prior to heading into state, which is a qualification to get to state. And then Roy in the 198 weight class uh, squatted 665. And just a quick story there. Uh, you get three attempts on each lift. And uh, Roy took it to his third lift before he actually completed the the exercise <laughs> so coach Thompson and I were sitting there wondering how we were gonna make a phone call back to Conroe to uh, <coughs> see, see what was gonna say what was gonna happen but he came through on his third attempt and then uh, went on to bench 340 and then finished with a deadlift of 635 um, there really wasn't after he made that 665 in the squad he was relatively head and shoulders above everybody else there wasn't as much stress the rest of the meet actually for him and uh and took home the first place uh award in the 198 weight class um, he broke a record this past year at the uh regional meet of uh back set back in 1992 it was a squat record of uh, 675 roy came through that day at the regional at 680 and um <laughs> that's about it. That's impressive. It was outstanding. I just you know, like to thank the, the school board and the entire district. I'd like to congratulate Gavin. It was enjoyable. It was a great day for uh, CISD because mm -hmm. both uh, platforms were side by side, so we get to what we got a chance to watch each other uh, perform. So I'd like to congratulate the Woodlands on their representation as well. And I'd like to thank Dr. Weatherly and Coach Walker, who's here this evening as well, too, uh, for their support throughout the year with signatures and funding and all that good stuff that we have to run around and get prior to uh, having an opportunity to compete. So thank you very much. Thank you. Just right quick, I appreciate you both reminding me uh, how much time I need to spend in the gym, a little bit more time. <laughs> at, that, at that rate, I'm going to have to live there. Um, but seriously, you guys have done an outstanding job, two fine young men and represent our district. And on behalf of Dr. Stockton and the school board, we just can't say enough how proud we are, how proud we are of you guys. You, you guys represent well. You're, you're top class athletes in your respective field, which is weightlifting, and we know you're outstanding students as well. So congratulations, thank you, and uh, keep doing what you're doing. You guys are lifting, what, deadlifting small cars, man. That is, <laughs> that is, that's phenomenal. So great job, guys. Appreciate everything.
All right, item 2C, Special District Recognition, CISD and the Fine Arts Department, NAM Foundation, Best Communities for Music Education Award. Dr. Okay, Talk. at this time I'll invite uh, Dr. Bob Horton, Coordinator for Fine Arts for CISD, to come to the podium, please. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. I am excited to share with you that Conroe ISD has received a 2017 designation as a best community for music education. Let me begin by thanking you, our CISD Board of Trustees, for your support of the fine arts that allows opportunities like this to be possible. The Best Communities for Music Education is a nationwide recognition program that is selected by the National Association of Music Merchants Foundation. The NAM Foundation is a nonprofit organization committed to advancing music education through active participation. Established in 1999, the Best Communities in Music Education Survey is a nationwide search for communities who provide access to music education as an essential part of a complete education and who exemplify commitment and support for music education. This 18th annual survey measured a variety of factors, including budgetary commitment to music education, opportunities for students to learn music, the presence of highly qualified and certified music mm -hmm. teachers, adherence to state and national standards, and the types of musical experiences offered and opportunities for performance and competition, among other factors. A community had to show that they are committed to access and high standards for music education in all areas to be named a best community for music education. <laughs> for us, to earn this designation, we submitted a short little 38-page survey <laughs> with information about our school district, community, and instructional practices of the over 14,000 potential applicants, 2,000 different school districts applied and Conroe ISD was one of the 476 in the nation to earn this designation. Two thoughts from the NAM Foundation about this award perfectly describe Conroe ISD. First, I would share that the Best Communities for Music Education designation is awarded to school districts that demonstrate outstanding achievement in efforts to provide music access and education to all students. Also, Districts that have been recognized by the NAM Foundation are often held up as models for other educators looking to boost their own music education programs. 2017 is the sixth consecutive year that CISD has been named a best community for music education. At this time, I know we have some of our teachers who could make it here tonight, and I invite those teachers to stand because they are a huge part of the reason that we have earned this. So, music teachers, thank you so much for being here. And I just want to again say thank you to the board for giving recognition to the exemplary work uh, in our music education in Conroe ISD. We also want to say thank you to you and your staff and all the teachers that make such a difference and are so committed to the education of our children. Not just in music, but specifically tonight in music, okay? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Conroe has long been, I mean, Dr. Stockton has said it many times, all means all. So that goes for music as well. And a lot of people remember when the budget cuts happened in 2008 and district lost their focus on fine arts their ability to provide fine arts. And yet this district, we made a conscious decision that that was just not even on the table. Uh, we, we might not have lunch, but we're gonna have music. <laughs> no, no. We're, we're a blessed community and we had both, of course. And uh, I just wanna thank y'all for doing all that you can do to enrich kids' life through music. And thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. Sure. 
I would love that. Ms. Godfrey, has anyone registered to address the board? Yes. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations of more than five must appoint a representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Godfrey, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. Dr. Liu. Good evening, board member, Dr. Stockton. Actually, I have promised to uh, behave because my uh, child's teacher is here <laughs> <laughs> tonight. Uh, I actually have never attended a board meeting in all of my 54 years of life. I am here because I am concerned. I was surprised to read in the Chronicle, Houston Chronicle recently, a statement from Conroe ISD stating the, um, the administration has not been notified about any acts of discrimination. My family has five children enrolled in Conroe ISD. And we have been very vocal about complaining about racial discrimination for years. In fact, this is a very hot topic among Asian parents of this school district. Pretty much we meet for dinner, informally, formally, school functions. That seemed to be the very hot topic. So you're going to ask, why has nobody complained? There are a few reasons that was given to me by my Asian friends. And the school board member may not be aware of this. Many parents of the Asian children are on the work visa. As such, they're afraid to complain because of all the rhetoric that's going on that they don't want to speak up. They are also afraid that by complaining, their children's teacher will not give them the little recommendation that they need for going to college. For me, I really have never complained because, you know, my kids are kind of mediocre and they just kind of go along in life. So it wasn't important until I read this statement in the newspaper and got very concerned that nobody's really addressing this. My sibling and I grew up in Oklahoma in the 1970s. We've been to many school districts in Oklahoma in Houston and surrounding area. I also went to college and medical school in Houston. I could tell you, me and my sibling have never experienced the amount of discrimin discrimination that my children are experiencing in Conroe ISD. I have emailed some of the board members with specifics. I'm not going to mention any names uh, to protect the children. 
I'm sure all of you, or well, most of you, have seen the movie, Hidden Figures. That's my favorite movie because my father was a math professor and he was a mathematician for the first space shuttle launch. In the movie, the engineer, the African-American engineer lady made a statement. Every time we have a chance to get ahead, they move the finish line. That's how we feel. Uh, is happening to um, our children in Conroe ISD. You get the highest grade in math. You're told by your teacher, you know, that's not good enough. You need to have extracurricular activity. I don't know why extracurricular, extracurricular activity would have anything to do with a math score. Fine. So this child go and become the national champion in Taekwondo. You know, Come back to the teacher, ah, not good enough. You must have community service. So this child goes and overdid herself and was so good at volunteer service that NBC featured her on TV for her volunteer work. Not good enough. We're going to give the best math teach, uh, student award to a student that to score maybe eight or nine point lower than you on the final semester grade. That is really just not fair. We need to know the rules. The rules need to be applied consistently. Um, and, uh, and we just can ask for a fair treatment of our children. But mostly, I just want to bring it up to the board to say it is an issue. It's an issue that needs to be, ad be addressed. Just because the Asians are not so focal doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Godfrey, the next. Mrs. Jew. I'm Moline Jew, and this is my first time addressing the school board as well. I just want to expound a little bit on what my, that was actually my sister, about what my <coughs> own children have experienced in the Conroe ISD School District. On the Conroe ISD website, it states, Conroe ISD does not discriminate on the basis of race, color, national origin, sex, religion, or disability. I implore the school district to honor this creed. I want to, all, to congratulate all the student athletes that were recognized today because I know how much effort is put forth by these athletes as a mother, parent myself of a world-class athlete. And it would actually be nice if my daughter was acknowledged as well because in my opinion, She's been overlooked simply because she is Asian. Just to give you a couple of examples, because I know everybody wants concrete examples. I have a list of everything she's accomplished since elementary school, but I'll start with our junior high school. I'm not going to name the, the junior high school. Two years alone in junior high school, she was actually selected by the United States Olympic Committee for Team USA in the United States National Taekwondo team. She's ranked number one Taekwondo competitor in, her, in the USA in her age group. She's the Pan Am World Champion. She's a three-time USA national champion. She's the 2016-2017 AAU Junior Olympics national champion. She's a seven-time Texas state champion. She's been undefeated for seven consecutive years. She was selected by NBC out of 15,000 athletes at the Junior Olympics for an interview and feature for her volunteer work with special needs children and athletic accomplishments. She's also a volunteer algebra tutor, volunteer reading buddy, and she also visits on her own initiative elementary and intermediate schools to encourage younger students to participate in science and robotics. In terms of her academic accomplishments, science fair, she was first place in science fair district. She was first place regional at the University of Houston science fair. She's also um, at the University of Texas state science fair. She was second place and nominated for the national competition Broadcom Masters. She's also received numerous awards in debate, including Lincoln, du Lincoln Douglas Debate Oratory Impromptu, the only student in her school to have placed in all her debate competitions. She's also been awarded the Grand Championship Best Speaker. She competes on the school science bowl team, Science UL, First Lego League. She's also a Spelling Bee champion. And in seventh grade, she received the highest GPA. However, she did not receive any Best Student Awards in each subject area. My daughter received the highest grades or tied for the highest grades in all of her classes last year. There are at least four classes where she received the highest grade but was passed over for the best student award in each subject, in each instance, in favor of uh, white students each time. Case in points, here is an example. Best pre-algebra student award. The student who received this award received a cumulative 
96 first semester, 95 second semester. My daughter received 97 first semester, 101 second semester. That is a full seven point differential. Also, none of the students who received Best Students Award or Ambassador Awards were accepted in the Academy of Science and Technology and non, none even got into the first phase of the interview. Hey, I'm not gonna name names. My daughter and her three other Asian female classmates all received first round acceptance letters. And these are same criteria that's based on the Best Student Award, which is volunteer work, extracurricular, and also your academic. So I failed to see how they can get into the academy, but yet be overlooked at their own school and acknowledged at their own school. And one is actually the class president, and she is Asian, and thankfully she was voted class president by the student body. Because if I had no doubt, the teachers and administrative staff would have chosen a different representative. And, um, you know, You know, as a parent, it's really disappointing because I see how hard my daughter works. Um, uh, I don't know of any other Conroe ISD student who has achieved what she has achieved athletically, academically, or even community service-wise, yet she fails to be acknowledged by her school principal. Her school principal actually told me last year when I told her that, hey, guess what, she just won the world, she just won the world championships. His remark to me was, she just won 1,300 students who think she's special, whose parents think she's special. Well, I think she's special because she has achieved what no other student in Conroe ISD has achieved. He has not been recognized. And that's all I have to say. And also, in terms of her being selected by the uh, United States Olympic Committee for Team USA, that's actually her press photo there. This was released to the press. That's her. This is her bio on the United States Olympic site and also on the Team USA site. And to be selected to be on Team USA, you have to win something big, such as the World Championship. And she is also a three-time USA national champion. And, um, you know, I have her report cards. And also in elementary school, she also had the highest GPA in elementary school. And also in intermediate school, she also had the highest GPA. And during those times in elementary school, she also was winning national championships. She won the spelling bee. Ms. Ju, I'm sorry. Time is up. Okay, that's fine. I'm, that's all I want to say. Okay. It's just I want some fairness for the Asian students, and I want them to be acknowledged as well. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. <clears throat> there are no objections. We're going to move item 10 up. Um, human Resources, name the principal of St. Jacinto Elementary School, Dr. Stockton. Okay, um, this is always an exciting time for me as superintendent, us as a school district, to uh, bring candidates for principalships to the board for approval. So tonight I'm very excited to bring two re recommendations that I'm very, very proud of. The first one is for St. Jacinto Elementary School, and I'd like to recommend Krista McWilliams for that position. So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Congratulations, Ms. McWilliams. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. I want to begin this evening by saying how excited and honored I am to stand before you tonight. This is my 15th year in Conroe ISD, and I'm proud to say that I have truly worked my way up. I believe that all the positions I have held have prepared me to become a principal. That being said, I also know that I would not be standing here before you tonight if it weren't for the love and support of my family. I would like to thank my husband, Keith, who is with me tonight. We've been married for 25 years. <laughs> He has truly stood by my side through all my ups and downs, and for that I am truly grateful. Our son Cody and daughter Gloria were unable to attend tonight. They're in college and need to stay there. <laughs> uh, but they also have encouraged me along the way in my path of becoming a principal. Last but not least, I want to thank all of my colleagues and friends who are here tonight who have mentored me and helped shape me into the leader I am today. From the bottom of my heart, I want each and every one of them to know how much their encouragement and support have meant to me. I promise to work hard, 
ask questions, I've already done that, <laughs> <laughs> laugh a lot, and most importantly, strive to impact the lives of the students, staff, parents, and community of San Jacinto Elementary. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, principal of Caney Creek High School. <laughs> <laughs> this is unusual. Um, we've, this is the first time we've had a cheering group <laughs> come to a board meeting. And it's either going to be a very, very exciting moment or a very, very disappointing moment, <laughs> depending on what I say next. Um, no, this is, ex this is exciting. and. And um, I'm very um, excited and honored to recommend Jeff Stickler for the position of uh, principal at Caney Creek High School. I move approval. I second it. All right. All those in favor? Do you want discussion on this first? <laughs> well, we might should. I mean, <laughs> all right. I would like a cheer. All, all those in favor? All right. Congratulations, Congratulations. Dr. Stickler. <laughs> President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, I want to thank you for this great opportunity. When I came to Caney Creek High School as a coach 18 years ago, I knew I'd found a special place. Working there for seven years made me realize that this school is my home. Now having the opportunity to serve the students, parents, and faculty as principal is a dream come true. I'm excited to think of the great things in store for Caney Creek in the years to come, and I'm honored that you have entrusted me to be a part of it. I'd like to introduce my family who's come with me tonight. My wife, Melanie, thank you. Stand for up. <laughs> thank you for all the support through the years. I appreciate it so much. My two children, first, Cullen. He, uh, Cullen? He, I'm actually have the pleasure to be his principal at Moorhead Junior High right now, so I'm sure <laughs> he's very excited to know that he'll all be his principal for the next four years. <laughs> and my daughter, Kylie. <laughs> she will be starting Moorhead next year as a seventh grader. Uh, I also want to thank Dr. Knoll for his mentorship and guidance, and Mr. Caker for his encouragement and advice my numerous other colleagues who have helped me become the person I am today. I'd also like to thank the members of the Caney Creek community that are here tonight <laughs> and want to let them know that I'm committed to making Caney Creek the best that it can be. Right. Thank you very much. Exciting night. Um, item you. You are free to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Especially back there if you want to go. <laughs> Although if Sarah hasn't, she might want to get a picture of him with them. <laughs> That's pretty I don't awesome. Think we got our cheer. <laughs> Yay, we don't have to sit through it all. <laughs> That's the celebration of the wall. Yeah. Mm. a few minutes. Mm. You did a crowd. Were those people from Moorhead wishing him out? Or <laughs> 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 They're also said, the same kids that are going up with him. Yeah. yeah. So. The sign said welcome to the creek, so well, I yeah. think it's a good thing. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Um, item three, the consent agenda. I haven't heard any request to remove anything. I move approval of consent agendas presented. Second the motion. All right. All those in favor? <clears throat> 
All right, motion passes. Item 4A, consider approval of languages other than English slash career and technical education adoption for grades 7 through 12. Okay, Dr. Noll, if you'll present that item, please. Looking for the textbook cheer squad. <laughs> <laughs> Traffic probably yeah, caught them good up. Luck with that. <laughs> well, good evening, President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. The 2016 2017 textbook committee has completed its review of those textbooks designated by TEA in Proclamation 2017. Proclamation 2017 provides for the adoption of textbooks for languages other than English and career and technical education courses in grades 7 through 12. The CISD textbook committee members and subcommittee members have evaluated these textbooks and participated in a year-long review of the materials. The materials were on display at the textbook warehouse for public view from December 1st through January 15th. And additionally, we hosted uh, a new event for us this year. We had a textbook showcase that we hosted at Conroe High on December 14th for both our teachers and five surrounding districts to come in and evaluate those books. The teachers submitted evaluations and comments to the committee for consideration and recommendation. The textbook committee met on November 9th and February 14th and voted to recommend the attached list of books and materials to you for approval and ordering. I would like to recognize and thank our committee members who are here tonight, as well as those that have worked as a resource to our committee, and just a few introductions to thank them for their hard work. Um, I think we have, I think they're all here. Dr. Julie English is our Director of Assessment and Evaluation, and she uh, leads all of our IMA material, uh, instructional materials <coughs> allotment efforts, and so uh, we thank Dr. English for her work. She deserves a clap on her own, because <laughs> so what she does is unbelievable. Uh, additionally, the, those that work really hard to make this happen this year, uh, Dr. Edith Upshaw, our director of CNI, Ms. Debbie McNeely, our LOTE coordinator, Mr. Greg Shipp, our director of CTE, Dr. Matt Clark, our career and technical education coordinator, and Mr. Caker, our assistant superintendent. So thank you to all of you for thank your you. hard work. So at this time, I would ask for your approval of the uh, list submitted. Motion we approve and submit it. Second. All right. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Motion passes. Thank you, Dr. Knoll. Thank you, sir. Item 5A, information on selection of campus mascot and school colors for Grand Oaks High School and York Junior High, Dr. Stockton. All right. The item we've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. uh, I invite Dr. Knoll to present that item. <laughs> All right. Good evening once again. Uh, it, it's an exciting time when we're planning to open a new high school. And uh, as we continue to move forward through this process, there are many milestones uh, that occur that begin to give that school its own identity, its own brand, and those kids can, can get excited about it. And selection of a mascot is a, big, is a big step in that process. And so as we began this process, mm -hmm. Dr. Chris Povich, the principal at York Junior High, uh, initiated the mascot process with the students that are at, currently at York. Those are those seventh and eighth graders that will be the ninth and 10th graders, the first classes at Grand Oaks when we open. And they had a nomination process. They narrowed down their nominations to their three top choices, and that were the uh, Grizzlies, Gators, and Owls, their top three selections. And they actually had a, uh, a fancy electronic way of voting that they went through and used QR codes to vote. It was, it was a pretty exciting process. And their top choice came back as the Grizzlies. So the students would recommend uh, that they be known as the Grand Oaks Grizzlies. And as far as school colors, uh, as we've seen previously through our renderings of the building, the colors that are built into the building are royal blue and orange. The other predominant color in the building is gray. And so the, the recommendation would be um, for royal blue and orange with gray as an accent color um, for Grand Oaks High School. Now, additionally, as we consider the high school, we think about uh, a new feeder zone. And, and building that whole identity. And York Junior High is the feeder junior high to Grand Oaks High School. Currently, York Junior High uh, is royal blue and white. Their mascot is the Eagles. Right. You can see the conflict potentially there with the Eagle mascot with the Crosstown Oak Ridge High School. <coughs> and so uh, we did feel it was appropriate to make an adjustment at York Junior High as well. And so the recommendation there would be that they also are known as the York Grizzlies and their colors would be adjusted to royal blue and orange. Now the process at York would be an overtime process. It wouldn't require any immediate changes. Most of their uniforms are royal blue and white, which are very appropriate. Uh, we actually began to prepare for this process about three years ago and asked York to not 
purchase anything that said Eagles, just buy everything that said York and <laughs> go with just a Y. So they've, they've done a nice job of preparing, but that'll be a process that would be um, you know, trickled in over the next few years. But uh, I believe that having the high school and junior high matching um, will build a strong identity for that feeder zone. Okay. Awesome. And we will return next month. This is information this right. month, and we'll return next month and ask for your approval uh, of those items. Okay. You have a logo? We, we do not have a logo yet. Uh, that is something that we will work on in the future. Um, but, and I'm not sure if we'll have it for next month or not. But okay. we're, we're working towards that. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, item B, information on selection of campus mascot and school colors for Lucille J. Bradley Elementary. Dr. Stockton, <laughs> Dr. Null. No. All right. <laughs> so for Bradley Elementary, we initiated this, a similar process, a little different because those kids are all scattered out to different elementaries currently. But Dr. Christine Butler, our new principal for Bradley Elementary, did reach out electronically to all the, the families of students that will be attending Bradley next year and asked for them to make recommendations. And their top two choices came back as the bears and the elephants. And we did a, a, a quick vote and bears came back as the top choice. That fits very well in the new feeder zone identity mm -hmm. of the Grizzlies and, and having elementary be the Bears. Um, additionally, when you look at school colors, if you look at the construction uh, colors of that building, blue and gray are predominant colors in that building, and we would make that recommendation as school colors, <laughs> and once again, fits very nicely into the new, the new identity of the Grand Oaks feeder. So it would be the Bradley Elementary Bears and the colors blue and gray. All right. See a little... Great teddy bears now. Really, yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> absolutely. And, and Dr. Butler's here tonight. Yes. Oh, Dr. Butler's here. <laughs> Dr. Butler did a great job of making that happen for us. So thank so. you. All right. Any questions? Thank you. Thank Dr. you, Dr. Yeah, man. No purple and gold. No, <laughs> no. no. no purple and gold. They don't want to win. <laughs> <laughs> Item 5C, select construction manager at risk for the new K-6 in the Oak Ridge Feeder Zone, Flex 19 project, and authorize superintendent to negotiate and execute construction manager at risk contract. Dr. Stockton. Okay, at this time I'll ask Easy Foster to come make that presentation. President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration and approval the selection of the construction manager at risk for our new K-6 through, K through six. Mm -hmm. Campus in the Oak Ridge Feeder Zone. Uh, we're going to refer to this campus as Flex 19. Yeah. In November of 2015, our Board of Trustees selected the IBI group as the architect for this K-6 campus, Flex 19. Since then, IBI has helped by preparing a request for qualifications for construction manager at risk. We had six companies respond to our request for qualifications. The law will only allow a maximum of five companies to be invited into Step 2 of this two-step process. We invited companies uh, Brookstone, Dramala, Duratech, GTT, and Marshall to participate in the second step of our two-step process. Marshall Construction was selected as the offeror submitted the proposal determined to be the best value for the district based on our published criteria and our ranking evaluations. We've made the ranking evaluation a part of this item for your uh, information as well. At this time, we're requesting your approval of this selection. So moved. Second. Discussion? All right, all those in favor? Motion passes. Item 5D, select construction manager at risk for the new junior high school in the Conroe feeder zone. Dr. Stockton, Mr. Foster. Mr. Foster. At this time, I'd request your consideration and approval the selection of the construction manager at risk for our new junior high school in the Conroe High School feeder zone. Again, back in November, our Board of Trustees selected PBK as the architect for the new junior high. Since then, PBK has prepared a request for qualifications for construction managers at risk, of which we had five companies respond to that request for qualifications. We did invite all five of those back to participate in step two of our two-step selection process. Brookstone Construction, Dramala Construction, Duratech Inc., Gamble Construction, and Marshall Construction all participated in the second step of the two-step process. Marshall Construction was selected as the offeror who gave us the proposal that we determined to be the best value for the district. Again, the ranking evaluation has been made a part of this item, and we're, this time we're requesting your approval of this selection. So moved. Second. Okay. Okay. Um, any discussion? 
All those in favor? Opposed? And abstentions? Mr. Kidd. Uh, I did abstain. All right. Motion passes. Um, item 5E, capital improvements update. Picture time. <laughs> But this time I want to bring you bring, want to bring you up to speed for our capital improvements we have underway throughout the district. I'm going to start with the Woodlands College Park. This is our robotics project. Again, the story of the of the this project has been rain. Rain has been our nemesis, and it continues to be our nemesis. Oh, yeah. If you watched the weather last night and early this morning. However, we have made uh, some significant progress. You're looking at the interior photographs of that building now. This is the area uh, in front of our auxiliary gyms, leading to the exterior of the building. On the inside, we're preparing for the competition field to be installed. Uh, that All that material, like we said, was on site, so it's it's ready. They're preparing everything to lay down the, the competition carpets and things of that nature and finish complete the finishes inside that space. Exterior of the building is where rain is really getting us at this point, but we are beginning to make some significant process with the masonry uh, and buttoning that project up over the next uh, several weeks. Our network operations center. This is our data and infrastructure for the entire district. As you can see, the uh, cabinetry for our new electronic equipment is now installed. We spent the Easter break uh, upgrading the electrical service to this building with the utility company. We've been working with the utility for gas to upgrade a gas service to feed the generators that will keep us running in the event of a power outage for this particular project. We've made our ways uh, around the building and it's beginning to, to uh, come come to pass. I mean, so the, the project is, is right where it needs to be at this point, and we anticipate it finishing on schedule. Our life cycle for 2017, right, right now we're working in the evenings, in the overnights at uh, Gladys Elementary and at Bush. Uh, both those projects are getting new roofs, new flat roofs and new metal roofs. Uh, as you can see here, they're making their way around Gladys. We should be there for another two to three weeks as we wrap that project up. And then at Barbara Bush, uh, same size and scope project, we should be wrapping it up over the next few weeks as well. Again, over spring break, we worked on the athletics improvements at Caney Creek High School. Those have been uh, uh, completed as well. And as we move towards summer break, we'll, uh, we'll get into the rest of the, those campuses. All in all, we're working on 23 campuses, doing roofing and other uh, life cycle type items as we go through the district. At Knox Junior High in the Woodlands Transportation Center, uh, where we're at Knox Junior High, we're adding a set of science classrooms. So that building structure is in place now. They're working on the second floor concrete deck. Moving into the uh, roofing deck, uh, the project is on schedule. We anticipate opening it for school in August of this coming school year, uh, and it is where it needs to be currently. Uh, we're also increasing capacity at the field house where we need uh, to match the student capacity for the campus with the, uh, the programs down there. So you can see the building foundation is there. This building is actually a masonry construction to match the, uh, the building it attaches to. Interior. Uh, the uh, plumbing and all the other necessary improvements for the additional showers and other facilities are in place. At our transportation center, which is next door to this campus, uh, we have also done the building foundation there. That building actually delivers, the steel delivers here in the next two weeks. So that project is on schedule and ready for our, uh, it'll be ready for our bus drivers when they come back to school for the August start. Our safety and security project, which this is phase two, uh, phase two is underway. It's all above the ceiling where you can't really see anything that's going on. They've uh, started. We've met with the first wave of campuses that are being uh, worked on for phase two. Uh, so those principals know what is coming and the, the crews are in there overnight doing wiring and things above the ceiling so that uh, we can facilitate the new security measures for cameras and door contactors and access control systems as we go around. That project is proceeding as we anticipated and is on schedule. Moving on to Lucille Bradley Elementary School. This project is on schedule, scheduled to open in August of this coming year. Uh, as you can see from this picture, the, uh, the building is largely com complete at this point. We're, we're calling it about 70, 75% complete. They're working on the exterior at the front door. The rest of the exterior is essentially done. So inside the building, we're working on the building finishes. We've uh, installed a uh, majority of the cabinetry and casework. Uh, they're starting to get, uh, as you can see, ceramic tile going down in the commons areas now. The ceilings are in. We're working with our maintenance department to make sure all the everything that gets covered up is, uh, in fact, up to our standards and running. The project, as I said, is on schedule, and we anticipate moving our furniture in and taking possession of the building in June. At Grand Oaks High School, this project is also on schedule, scheduled to open in August of 2018. 
You can see the building structure, as we've reported, is complete. The roofing of the project is, from a dry condition, about 75% complete. Uh, the interior of the building is starting to come together. So things like drywall, ceramic tile, and restrooms, and the building, the interior building finishes or, or building structures are being built currently. And over the next uh, several months, you'll see the athletics portions of the buildings begin to develop. Uh, look, looking at here, the preparation to build the, uh, for the tennis court slabs. That slab is already in place since we took this picture. Uh, but over the next several months, you'll see the football, the baseball, the softball, and the other athletic events take their shape. And this month, we get to add a new project to our list, Flex 18, which we mobilized at the beginning of this month. And right now, it's preparing the site for the uh, new building that we're going in. So we're, we've just mobilized and just started the process of clearing for the building pad and all the utilities and other infrastructure as we look forward to reporting to you progress on that in the coming months. And that is our update. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Item 6A, financial report, Dr. Stockton. Okay, I'll ask uh, Aaron Rice to come up and give our financial reports, please. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It is my pleasure this evening to present the financial statements for the district for the month of March. Once again, these statements will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is the balance sheet. The balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and fund balances for the district. And each month, we always like to take a look at our cash and investments. And once again, focusing on our general fund, we see we have cash on hand of $500. We have bank deposits of a million dollars. Investments in our pools of $168 million. Uh, other investments, which are our shorter term investments of a year or less of $75 million. And our longer term investments with TCG Investment Advisors of $51 million for total cash and investments of $294.8 million. In property tax collections, we like to uh, track our progress there. And once again, we're, we're ahead of where we were last year, so we feel very confident at this point that we'll reach our 100% uh, goal there. The next statement we'll look at is our income statement. The income statement includes our revenues and expenditures. Revenues are broken down into three categories. That's local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. Looking at the detail of our local and intermediate sources, in the general fund and debt service, property taxes are the largest generator of revenues. In food service, it's food sales, and it's premium contributions and self-funded insurance. And we can also look at our year-to-date expenditures by major, by major category for each of the funds. And in general fund, as you can see, payroll is the largest expenditure we have. Debt service, we did make a debt payment in February. Mm -hmm. And uh, child nutrition, supplies and materials, our, our food supplies to feed our children. And uh, contracted services and self-funded, that's the payment of our, of our bills to the doctors. Our projected fund balance in, general, in the general fund, we're looking at a projected increase of about $9.5 million for this year. The debt service fund, we're looking at an increase of about $7.8 million. Our projected fund balance in child nutrition, uh, not much change here. We're looking at an increase of about $82,000. Our 2015 bond referendum status update, we've currently expended and encumbered $248.5 million. We have an esti estimate to complete of $268.5 million, giving us a, project a projected forecast of $516.8 million, leaving us with a contingency of about $3.4 million. Self-funded insurance, uh, month of March, went very well again. Uh, not as good as the previous months, but uh, but still positive. Uh, for the year, we've had total revenues of $26.3 million. We've had total expenses of $22.9 million, leaving us revenues over expenses of $3.3 million. Uh, participation at the Wellness Center in March, we had 477 visits there. Uh, for the year, we've totaled 3,077, and we're averaging about 440 a month. And do you have an update on the Conroe? Yes, and we're, we're currently... Uh, uh, in conversation with Memorial Herman, we're actually in contract talks. We do have a site for North County uh, Wellness Center, so we're looking forward to bringing that to y'all in, in the next month or so. Can we back up just one slide? Yes, sir. I just, I, something caught my eye. And yes, sir. Here. Um, can uh, you fill us in on uh, 
and, and I, if, it, if it's not, if you don't have this information tonight, you answer me later. I mean, it's not. It's, okay. But you know, uh, our, our original plan on Grand Oaks mm -hmm. and the increased cost. Can you tell me the, what that revolves around? I mean, in, unless it's concrete and brick and and labor and everything, uh, you know, it's just it just is what it is. But 156 versus 141. I mean, there's a significant difference. There. Yeah, I don't have the, the That's right. detail. I mean, he's might, me Mr. Foster might be able to. I mean, it might be something we could bring to you. At, at, at the time we bid Grand Oaks to the marketplace, we were at a, a peak in the construction cost mark, uh, markets, if you recall. About a, a year and a half, two years ago, concrete was at its, its, its all-time high and things like that. So at the time, I mean, the, the, the number hasn't changed since we put it on there, but it is, uh, that number it is all inclusive of the total move-in cost. So furniture, fixtures, equipment, mm -hmm. in addition to the construction contract, which is 136 million and change. Thank you. Did I answer everything you need? That's fine. Okay, now our investments for the month of March. Our par value at the end of March was $550 million. The wham of our pools is one day and we're yielding 95 basis points there. The wham of our other investments, this is any investment that we purchased of a year, year or less, is 125 days and we're yielding 1.19%. Uh, uh, the wham of our longer term investments uh, with TCG Investment Advisors, this is investments up to three years, is 543 days and they're yielding 1.12%. The wham of our combined portfolio is 67 days and we're yielding right at 1%. And our benchmark, which is the 90 day T bill, is at 75 and a half basis points. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Rice. You. With that, we uh, are ready to adjourn. Do I have a motion? We'll move. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you.